This is a short film about Northern Ireland police, army and covert radio equipment. Most of which, certainly the ones, the portables down here and the mobiles on this side and there, have only become available in the United Kingdom and been sold by ramco.co.uk and uh, other military surplus uh, dealers uh, and this is my collection of Northern Ireland police communications equipment. We start off first of all with the earliest set that I have and that is a TR32. Panny is uh, something uh, Northern Ireland channels on it are A, D and F they are 100 meg police channels 100 meg and 82 meg police channels the set itself is a Dimar 880 an FM Dimar M80 and three channel crystal controlled device with microphone speaker microphone uh, attached to it this came from a police radio um, collection at Horse Ferry House in London, which was sold off by a firm in Somerset uh, about two years ago, Glastonbury in Somerset. And that is the oldest Northern Ireland police uh, small size portable. The second one that has been used in Northern Ireland is the Pi Bantam. This is a military Pi Bantam that actually came from Blandford Forum, according to the ticket here. The RMP at, oh sorry, Bulford Camp, Bulford Camp, but these were definitely used by the army in Northern Ireland and by the police in Northern Ireland. And that is a Pi Bantam, which runs probably about a watt out, and so does the uh, Dimar, and they probably date from, let's say, 1970, approximately 1970. So, we now go forward to technology progress, bear in mind none of these radios are yet encrypted, to the Pi PF70, definitely used by the IRUC in Northern Ireland, and uh, there will be shortly a Northern Ireland Army film called 71, being released in October 2014, which will feature many radios that you may recognise here. That is a Pi Pocket Phone 70 as used by the RUC during the Troubles. And there's a rear view of it in its leather case. And I have some archive film of that actual, not that one, but them actually in use in Northern Ireland by the RUC. We then go on to the Pi PF1 Pocket Phones. These are green Pi PF1 Pocket Phones and they were used in the Bomb Squad kit in Northern Ireland. And a view at the back of those with the army stickers on them. Separate transmitter receiver. The transmitter will run 500 milliwatts. It's already on 435.1, no, sorry, 431.5 megs which was one of the frequencies they used in Northern Ireland for communications by the bomb squad in about 1972-ish. Now, police communications in Northern Ireland were on 100 megs and 82 megs transmit, the same as the rest of the UK, which ran up to about 1986, 1987 or so. And this is an original Northern Ireland Pi Europa. And as you can see on it, the call signs Lima for channel 1, Golf for channel 2, Juliet for channel 3, uh, Mike for channel 4 and Kilo for channel 5 are still embossed on the radio and this is a 6 channel FM Europa. And I much remember in the 1970s when lift conditions were up on uh, 100 megs and uh, Radio 1 was not yet competing for the space in the 100 meg band and I actually heard these call signs and the radios in use over there in those days. But that's all long gone now as they all then migrated to 155 megs and then to encryption.
So we go forward again now to Motorola. Motorola, I think, made a bomb. <laughs> if you excuse the pun, out of Northern Ireland. First of all, we have some covert HT220 stroke MT500 sets. Covert being because they have no speaker mic like their sister sets there. No speaker in the front of them or uh, microphone. They rely upon a handset that plugs in here. We do into a covert harness and then this can be shoved down your trousers or wherever you like, down your shirt or down your back of your pants. And is a two channel surveillance radio uh, based upon the HT220 stroke MT500 Motorola design. Uh, they are not encrypted. They are crystal controlled and not encrypted and probably date from 1970. 778 onwards maybe a bit earlier than that uh, we now go on to mt 500 and mt 700 transceivers which again motorola the bigger ones here are the 10 capability of 10 channel these are only four channel the slimline ones probably hold, used by the officers or something or for covert use these are only two channel transceivers and uh, run on 15 volt uh, 500 milliamp hour batteries 450 milliamp hour batteries and as you can see they all have the Northern Ireland designation number of TR transmit receive 117 transmit receive 121 there is a back view of one the frequency plaques were were blank and these I will probably find are on high band uh, frequencies I have no, not yet investigated to see what frequencies they are on I do not believe that these sets are encrypted at all I have not looked in the fatter um, MT700s here yet but everything else that we go on to now became encrypted e.g. white noise transmissions that nobody could receive on a normal radio. We now go forward to the MX350 and MX300 series. These are DVI or DVP encrypted radios and they are on 155, 147 megs, something in that region. There is the encryption switch, which is there for the circle for non-encryption, uh, sorry, the circle for encryption and the cross circle for non-encryption, I believe, or the clear, or the other way around it may be. And again, they have the frequency packs, original frequency packs on the back, but no uh, designation numbers. The 350s have the boards in in this space here. The 340s uh, will probably use more uh, for in the clear communications. Now I have an absolute mint Northern Ireland Fire Brigade 340 here and as you can see it is a TR114 NIF B, Northern Ireland Fire Brigade and this is a synthesized MX300S which is in absolute mint, no, MX340 I'm sorry not MX350, MX300S with its uh, speaker microphone attachment and it does not have the encryption Chris switch on it, it has a speaker off and a speaker on switch which may also have been used for the encryption switch and again these are high band this is a high band set and designated for use by the fire brigade as hand portable communications in northern ireland we then go on to the system saber and these are system sabers tra138 tra179 and these are 100 channel plus encrypted secure net encrypted uh, radio transceivers and you can see there the word secure net on it and here is the symbol again for in the clear and encrypted in the clear and encrypted 
and uh, those sets and indeed uh, the Mark III set there which is a TRA-147 TRA-147 transceiver high band that's used through repeaters which are encrypted um, uh, Quantar base stations on the 145-147 meg uh, portion of the band. Now in order to load the encryption keys into them these are the key loaders which you could load a random number probably of 16 to 32 digits into either an MX300 the MX300 would use one of these the DVP earlier encryption uh, unit with only the seven keys on it as these had limited number of encryption keys as time marched on and we went on to the system saber which could cope with multi encryption keys up to A, B, C, D, E, F hex encryption in SecureNet and then those were used with these radios to encrypt and also with the Astra Spectra and that sorry with the Spectra not Astra with the Spectra there is a traffic warden Spectra 50 watt dash mobile in high band again round about 155 147 143 megs and again it has got the TRA 157 designation for Northern Ireland and has the 50 watt PA on it and the set also is complemented by the Astro encryption radios the Astro Spectra which is this transceiver here this is a 25 watt version in VHF it would be and uh, that is a TRA165 a TRA165 which you can see upside down there let's turn the set round a bit that is the 25 odd Astra Spectra and it has another designation of yeah, TRA165 and it's serial number 0051 and a Motorola designated number here on the side and that has used Astro Spectra encryption which again would use one of these key loaders etc these two key loaders are marked for cross-border communications and divisional communications so that the correct code from the correct key loader was loaded into the correct set these are T30113BX and T30313BX, uh, T30313BX and T3012CX, SecureNet um, DVI encryption key loaders. And then we go on to the HT600E 99 channel transceivers which again have again have TRA128 and TRA TR sorry TR151 TR128 and uh, swipe symbols on the back for accounting for the sets of course it would be quite uh, embarrassing if they lost uh, an encryption set and, uh, those could then be quickly uh, put to rights by loading a new key from a DVI or a DVP or DVI XL key loaders back into the system. So we have a home office UHF set here and we have a VHF set here uh, which were probably used for in the clear communications the HT600 so I have not investigated them to see if they are encrypted yet they have encryption modules in them not that I would have any use for the encryption modules as you cannot use them on amateur radio frequencies uh, the system sabers could be used mobile and the as spectras could be used as fixed stations the army used the um, spectras as fixed stations and here is a divisional only TR 150 
25 watt, uh, sorry, 50 watt um, Spectra in a Motorola case. And if I just push that there, you can read that to authorise for a kilo for this equipment, please telephone this extension number and quote the radio number. I don't think we can do that now. Last tested the 25th of the 8th in 2002. And that has got its uh, Motorola uh, microphone on the side of it. If we go around the back, you can see the set poking out of the back. Army equipment stuck on it on the label. I won't move that else, that'll probably fall off. And its designation number on the back and this was used for cross-border communications this is the key load switch and also the array switch so that when the IRA come bursting through the door you go to arrays and they don't know what keys they are and if you disconnect the system and you pull that box out it's got a uh, limit switch on it so that when you, you take the lid off it to look inside at the encryption you lose the encryption key because it's shorted out from the memory by the uh, fact of taking the box lid off and that is a unit that sits in there on its own and there is the key load plug-in position. So we'll swing round now to look at the mobile HODs which are vehicle adapters for system sabers and you can just see that there is a secure net system saber sat in that HOD and these are the LCD readout microphones for controlling the system sabers whilst they're in the HOD for charging. So you can change channels, so, so, sorry, you can send uh, volume, etc. up and down. You have to change channels here on the set itself. Not using that, that's the volume. And then if you want to remove the set, you can do that. And you can pull the set, usually pull the set out. It's a bit stiff, that one. But you can lock that in there and then it becomes operational from the microphone. Here is an empty one and uh, I can operate the uh, locking mechanism there and that's called the SVA uh, Sabre Vehicle Adapter 275 number 275 and the uh, microphone unit with the LCD reader for the channels etc and there's a couple more TRA135 uh, Spectrum mobiles which uh, do have some form of encryption uh, modules in them or had some encryption modules in them as some of them have been removed by the MOD at Ramco before the uh, equipment was uh, released for sale in the July uh, disposal sale at ramco.co.uk which is in Lincolnshire and also Whittam's which is Honeypot Lane at Grantham they have also had a fair bit of this equipment over the years so there we go Northern Ireland radio equipment held at the Pi Museum at Bewdley in Worcestershire, Pi and Radio Telephone Museum of Great Britain, which is uh, the curator Dave G.A. EPR speaking. <laughs>